Good morning, everybody. Today is Sunday, March the 21st, Redline Nova update. It's been uh, probably three or four weeks since I have posted an update on the car, and for a couple of good reasons. Uh, number one, I took a week off and went to Colorado to go skiing, had a great big time out there. And number two, I hadn't got too much done here lately, thanks to this little booger right there. That is a cutoff wheel that came to pieces and took a chunk out of my hand. Uh, if you don't want to see uh, what it did to my hand, fast forward a little bit. Here is a shot of my hand after this thing came to pieces. It took about an eighth of an inch out of my hand and I've been on antibiotics because it swelled up on me really, really thick like a balloon and uh, been trying to recover. But I did get a few things done over the past couple of weeks. So I'm going to show you what I got. I had two epiphanies regarding that cutting wheel that came apart and took a chunk out of my hand, which number one was, thank God that wasn't my face. I picked up a really good new mask to protect my entire face for doing this kind of work in the future. And the other epiphany is, stop wearing these damn type of gloves and start wearing these when running a cutoff wheel. My big win of the week came that I have finally got myself a Woodward Fab English wheel. I've been waiting on that English wheel for more than a minute and the reason that you've got to have that thing is if you intend to use a bead roller like I intend to to make all of your own custom floor pans, firewall, all of that kind of stuff, you have got to have the ability to pre-stretch the metal so that when you bead roll it, it doesn't just warp. So basically what you're doing is you're using your English wheel uh, to push the metal down in one direction. That way when you come back through and you use your bead roller to push it up in the other direction, it doesn't distort the hell out of it. Now, full disclosure, I want to let you guys know I have never used an English wheel in my life before. I have no idea what I'm doing, but like everything on this build, I'm figuring it out. So I decided that I would do a couple of test pieces to make sure that I, my brain had some sort of idea of what I was trying to accomplish here. So I got myself a couple of square pieces of sheet metal, marked out the exact same square and rounded off the corners and everything. So I had two basic identical test pieces. I decided I would just put one of them straight into the bead roller, bead roll it, not pre-stretch it at all. The other one that you can see I put into the, um, the English wheel and I pre-stretched it. So I pushed the material in the opposite direction of the direction that I was about to bead roll. And so I was doing this trying to make sure that I had some sort of idea of how much I needed to pre-stretch the material so that when I bead rolled it, I created basically a flat piece of steel and not a warped tin can. Okay, so I created a couple of test pieces that you see on my workbench right there. So the deal is the one on the left, I pre-stretched and you can see how it's not tin canny. It's not necessarily perfectly flat because I don't truly know what I'm doing, but it's not floppy. Notice how the one on the right, if I push on the corners, it literally just bounces around and flops back and forth. I can work with the one on the left and probably make use of it, but the one on the right is pretty much ruined. So after I made those two test parts right there, I decided it was time to go ahead and see if I could make a usable part for the car. Uh, I marked off on a piece of sheet metal that was going to be the fuel cell basin for the car, what it needed to be, threw it into my shear, cut it up, put it into the English wheel, did a little bit of pre-stretching, and then put it into the bead roller, uh, put the beads into the fuel cell basin, and finally we get to this shot right here where you can see where I'm basically fabricating up the sides of the fuel cell basin. At this point on the next shot, you'll notice I've got it flipped over upside down, and I'm using a cardboard template to try and form and figure out exactly what the fuel sump, you know, the basin of the fuel sump needs to be. And in this shot here, you can see that I have, uh, I've pretty much got it finished. Now, I want to go ahead and stop for just a second here and say that if you are hearing me say this and you think that I have created that fuel cell basin for this car and everything just came out rinky dinky beautiful, there was no warpage or anything, then I am leading you on. The amount of hammering that I did on that thing to get it straight after I bead roll it, you know, was, was really quite a lot of hammering because again, this is the very first thing I have ever created while I pre-stretched it in a sheet metal uh, English wheel and then I put it into the bead roller. There was a lot of hammering to get to that point. Uh, but, you know, I got it ultimately to the point that I was happy with it and I felt like I had a usable part. 
So I'll show you a few things that I've done here with this fuel cell basin. Uh, number one, I put in some pieces of uh, three quarter inch square tubing on the front and the back side you can see up in there that ultimately hold it. I, I did decide to TIG weld the seams here and down through here, although albeit, you know, my welding right here was not very good. Uh, came out pretty nice over in here, so I fully TIG welded it up. One of the things I was kind of proud of was that I used uh, my sheet metal brake and my, uh, my bead roller, and I rolled this edge. So you'll notice how like this edge right here is kind of a sharp edge, you see that, and this is a rolled edge. So you're never going to cut yourself on that. I uh, was pretty happy with how that came out. I basically just uh, MIG welded in place right along here. I did bead blast it before I ever installed it into the car so that, you know, it would be uh, just pretty much ready to wipe down with a cleaner when it was time for paint and it should stick to it well. Speaking of paint, you will notice the gray right through here that is weld through primer. I did decide to go ahead and coat uh, the basin on the inside of the frame rails and the basin with weld through primer. So, um, you know, hopefully that helps with uh, rust on down the road. But at the end of the day, I am pretty happy with what I have created. Now you may notice that the fuel cell in the car is not centered in the car. Notice how there's no gap over here, but over here you got about a three or four inch gap, right? The reason I decided to do that and not center the fuel cell in the car was to create some really precious space. I didn't want to have this giant fuel pump back here in the back of the car hanging down right here where you would see it underneath the bumper given that the thing's anodized red i just thought that would look well, frankly like a bag of dicks so what i decided to do was to take the uh, the the pump here and mount it right over here in between you know um, right underneath the frame rail actually right next to the fuel basin you really couldn't put this thing forward of the differential because by doing so your fuel lines would have to run up over the differential and naturally you've got to have fuel flowing straight from uh, your fuel cell into your pump so in the in the interest of trying to hide that big pump so you really didn't see it i decided it would just be best to mount it right there i also went ahead and um, i did mock up the back of the car i put the bumper and the tail on the back of the car and i made sure that you're not going to see a bunch of that fuel cell hanging out the bottom of the car you may see a little bit of it from a distance but you know if you're 30 40 feet away giving the car a walk around you're never even going to see that uh, so i wanted to kind of continue that theme and make sure that the fuel pump was not just hugely visible so i'm going to be locating it probably somewhere right up in here I did come up with a cool idea as well. Since I have all of this space right through here, most people would probably just put, uh, you know, sheet metal right across the top and make it a nice clean trunk. Not me. I'm actually going to make this like a toolbox area. I'm going to again uh, do some more sheet metal work just like I did here with the basin and make this a recessed area where I can put, you know, tools and maybe a folding chair for hot rod shows, that kind of thing where it won't roll around in the trunk. That should be pretty cool. All four pieces of sheet metal fabrication equipment that I used to create this basin, which is my 48 inch brake, uh, my Woodward Fab English wheel, my bead roller, as well as probably the handiest thing in this entire shop, if I'm being honest, is that shear right there. I'm going to put links down below in the description to all four pieces of those equipment in case you guys want to know where to get that stuff. In other news, I am still working on the exhaust for this thing. I, I initially started trying to create a step down that you see right here, and you notice I've cut it up. I'll show you this picture here where you've noticed that I've done this, uh, this step down, this 45 degree step down to try and go, you know, from the exhaust tips that exit through the rockers and then come down to where they can meet the mufflers. I wasn't happy with that. I have since decided I'm going to do some pie cuts and try and make something that's just a little bit more uniform and professional looking. So hope to report on that in the upcoming weeks. It's also worth mentioning that I have ordered in a second set of mufflers for this car. These are Flowmaster Flow FX uh, three inch. Come on, baby. Come off of there. There we go. Three inch Flowmaster Flow FX stainless steel mufflers. 
I think I'm probably going to be switching those out for the great big mufflers that you saw in my last video update, but you know, that stuff will probably be addressed next weekend or the uh, weekend after. So, getting to uh, back to work on the exhaust here soon, hoping to get that um, buttoned up. We'll see. Be sure to check in with me in the uh, oncoming weeks, and hopefully, I'll be able to show you guys an exhaust system installed on the car. Hope you guys are enjoying my updates. Click subscribe if you've uh, never uh, seen my videos before and just now finding one of these things. I always appreciate new subscribers. I also appreciate when folks click the thumbs up down below because it lets Google know, excuse me, YouTube know, you know, that these are good videos that they should be showing to other people. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you all had a great weekend. Hope you didn't tear up your hand like I did. Y'all take care.